Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Naval Action Ship Reviews. So, we're here in the St. Pavel as she was the one you guys voted in for the next ship review. So there's a new poll in the description, so vote for whatever ships you want to see next. The highest voted is what comes next. So yeah, let's go on to the review. And we'll begin with history, which I'm going to try and do in every ship review from now on. So the, the St. Pavel, she was built uh, by uh, some shipbuilders in Ukraine at Nikolaev in Ukraine by shipbuilders A. Afansiev and I. Sokolov in 1794 for the Russian Navy. She was launched under the name Sviatoy Pavel or St. Paul translated. In game she's known as the St. Pavel though. The Pavel, she was the flagship of uh, Russian Vice Admiral Fyodor F. Ushakov, who lived between 1744 and 1817. And she was based in the Black Sea. And uh, in 1798, Russia became allied with Turkey. So the Black Sea fleet was allowed to pass into the Mediterranean, Mediterranean by the Turkish. And the Black Sea fleet did, with Admiral Ushakov on board the St. Pavel. They took part in various blockades and took... Oh, shit. And the French occupied cities and forts, took over some of them together, the, the Russians and the Turkish, the Turkeys. And they captured some, obviously. I think I mentioned that. And they were also planning on... Or Ushakov was uh, going to attack Malta with the British. The British, of course, they were a bit reluctant since uh, the British were afraid of uh, the Russian increase in presence in the Mediterranean. So, Nelson, you know, the famous guy at the Battle of Trafalgar, and Nile for that matter, um, they... Uh, he tried to dispatch the Russians to Egypt. He didn't get the entire fleet, but the Russians did eventually agree to send a small squadron to Egypt. However, they were going to attack Malta together. Admiral Nelson and uh, Admiral Ushakov, who by the way got promoted to Admiral while he was flag... or um, on board the flagship Saint Pavel. But, and Admiral Nelson would have to follow Ushakov's orders because uh, Ushakov was actually the senior officer of the com combined forces. However, the attack on Malta never happened and in 1799 the Saint Pavel was ordered to return to the Black Sea and more I don't know. That was all I got for now. I might have missed something, because let's be honest, I'm lazy. But either way, that was short, short on our history. So now let's go uh, take a look at the ship in-game. So the St. Pavel, she is currently the only second-rate second, second rate ship of the line in-game. She has 82 guns. I'm, I only arm her with 78 though, since I don't bother with the two or four guns, two per side. Excuse me, on her quarter castle. Sorry. So, being a second rate, of course, she has two durabilities. And uh, her armament is um, a bit of a mixed bag, really. Her bottom gun deck, 42 pound cannons, nothing to complain about. Her middle gun deck, 24 pound cannons, nothing to complain about. Top gun deck, so this deck, or weather deck, or whatever you want to call it. Six pound cannons? No, that's a... Uh, which is why I arm her with 24 pound carronades up there. Which is, in my opinion, don't bother with the six pound cannons. They're putt putt guns at this size of ship. And the same armament for her quarter castle. 
but I don't bother with cannons there, although there is an advantage to putting cannons there as height is taken into account when using things like fire deck guns. So if you have cannons there, fire deck guns should be more effective. So that doesn't hurt at all. Also, another thing of note, she has no bow chasers. Only ship of the line with no bow chasers. Which... Is disappointing. I think I would have liked the Pavel a lot more if she had bow chasers. Since she is a quite a fast ship. So it hurts a bit that she doesn't have any bow chasers. But that she is quite fast. She's the second fastest ship of the line. She is slower than the Ingemarlan. But... She until recently, until the Ingemarland was added, she was by far the fastest ship in the of the line. And she still is the very fast. So, don't think otherwise. Her crew count are also quite high. She needs, or she has 800 crew. Which puts her at the level of a victory which has 850 crew. And you might think, but that's a downside, is it not? Well, before the patch, which implemented crew, it would have been a disadvantage because you couldn't sail her at Flagge Kapitän or Flag Captain or whatever. However, now with the new crew changes, you can do that comfortably. However, if you sail her as Commodore with 800 crew, you can use her very good speed, her high crew capacity. Load up the boarding modules, and you have an amazing boarding ship. You could easily cap two, three other ships of the line in a battle, which could be very effective. If you have like one Pavel or two Pavels in your fleet as dedicated boarders, and say in a port battle, you could just cap a couple of uh, their ships of the line, and it would be of great advantage to you. That is until they nerf marines. We don't know how how good that will be. That strategy will be, then. But it might still be a viable strategy. Strategy. So she is an excellent boarding ship. She is also an excellent ship of the line, though, as just a regular fighter, because she has very big guns, 42 and 24 pounders, and of course 24 pound cannons. It's stupid to bring the six pound cannons. Don't even think about it. Seriously, they don't do shit. She, so she has a heavier broadside than the Bellona, which is the other ship you can man at this crew, or crew or level, or she has less than the Victory, however, she has other advantages over the Victory, which I'll get to soon. So let's compare it to the Bellona first. So obviously this ship, the Pavel, has a bigger broadside weight due to the bigger cannons. The Pavel also is faster, however it turns worse. But in a line fight, it those things don't really matter. The Pavel also has more armor. Or, not armor, structure. Armor, I don't know since it's not publicly available. The structure on the Pavel is 9000 versus 7400 on the third rate or the Bologna. So that's an advantage for the Pavel. Large, so the Pavel is better in the line fight. Of course the Pavel has one less durability though. But she has more structure, she has bigger guns, more broadside weight. So I'd take the Pavel over the Bologna in the line fight any day. day. Although the Bologna is prettier in my opinion. I don't like... Shit. Wrong repair thing. I meant to do that. <laughs> my mistake. Waste of repair kit. But anyway... The Bologna is prettier, so personally I would sell the Bologna. But don't get me wrong. Well, I, the Pavel is still a very good ship at port battles. She is the best second rate. There's no better second rate in game, so... There's no other second rate period in game, so of course she is the best second rate. But yeah... It's... You can't really do anything about the one durability less. I'd take the Pavel any day over a Bologna in a port battle. Well, I would say you should take a Pavel any day over Bologna in a port battle. I just sail the ships I find pretty, so I wouldn't. 
But yeah, anyways, next, uh, let's compare it to the victory. Now, of course, the Pavel in a line fight is worse in every aspect. She has 2,500 less armor, a structure. She is faster, but that doesn't really matter in a line fight. She has lower broadside weight since uh, the two top decks of the victory is 12 pound cannons. So the Pavel can't really keep up with that. The victory has, yeah, more armor and uh, has more broadside weight. However, she has less, uh... excuse me, I'm a bit gassy today, so I keep on burping a bit. But, but anyways, the victory only has one durability. That's the advantage of the Pavel. The Pavel has two durabilities, which means that she is cheaper to produce. For every one victory you produce, you produce essentially two Pavels, since you have a Pavel with two durabilities. That is assuming they have used the same hours and same resources. The Pavel is also cheaper. Of course, the victory has more larger broadside weight. However, if you could choose between, say, 5 victories and 10 Pavel, well, 7 Pavels, or 8 Pavels, Pavels might be the better, the 8 Pavels might be the better option. Maybe. I don't know. Either way, the Pavel, you might say, why not sail the victory? Well, simply because economics. If you lose a victory, say you have 2 port battles, one on Monday and one on Tuesday. If you lose your ship bo uh, both both at both port battles. On Monday, you'd be out of victory, and it and say you had your victory made, you made yourself that victory on Monday. You have to wait two days before you can craft next one, since it costs something like seventeen hundred. The Pavel, meanwhile, if you lose the durability on it, you can still partake on Tuesday, but you can't partake if you use the victory, assuming you build it yourself, have all the materials ready beforehand, and so on. You, you wouldn't be able to. That is if you lose the victory. However, the ch chances of losing the victory, you would imagine, is smaller. It might be. However, of course, you being in a victory, you'd probably be focused down. So, the victory, of course, five victories beats five Pavels anytime. However, if you can't afford to keep up with the victories, for whatever reason, Pavel is a very good second choice. She is more than capable in a line fight. She has 1400 more armor after uh, more armor than a Bologna or structure than a Bologna after all. And you can also load her for boarding. Maybe you'll cap yourself a victory. <laughs> Seriously, she would do very good as a boarding ship. And there are lots of people that use her as a boarding ship, due to her speed, crew count. And now with the crew system, if you're at Falafi Capitain, you can also crew this. You would str struggle to crew, say, the Victory, however this you could quite comfortably crew. So anyways, this has been my ship review of the Saint Pavel, as she is known in-game. Or, as she was historically, the Sviotoi Pavel. I probably butchered that pronunciation, but anyways. Thank you all for watching. Vote for the next ship you want to see in the ship reviews. And I'll see you next time. Bye!